everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the 10-7 MMA. And we are here today with that young 10-7 Dino and Dino custom one-of-one one glove. But aside from that, we are also here today to cover UFC 293. I'm DS, and I'm here, you guys already know, with Dino Bam Bam. What's Dino Bam Bam. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? I'm doing great. So one of one. There's two gloves. Look, what does Just it say right there? Dino. That's us. That's us. So phenomenal gloves. Do you want to shout out how you got those? Or Yes. Thank you to Fiori, my sister's friend. Very nice present, birthday present that you got me. Yeah. Thank you, Fiori. Thank you. Um, yeah, man. I'm excited. Is there a lot of Sanya fight card? You know, <laughs> Izzy gets a lot of shit, right? Izzy gets a ton of shit for being a boring fighter. A lot of lackluster, you know, fights like Cannoneer. I feel uh, like that the boring thing is like kind of like for this fight has yeah. gone away. Cause, Maybe because like the the recency bias of that insanity knockout yeah. is like it's still in the air. You sure, know? I mean yeah. he had the crazy knockout last time. He got knocked out the time before, but I feel like a lot of people, the haters, you know, they think of like the the Cannoneer fight. The, Not even the haters, like the, the like, Romero. Like, fight. I get it. Like yeah, of course, it's that, very possible and probably more likely that that's what we revert to now. It's very possible, but then he's also had some bangers: the Gastelum fight. The Ugh. two Pereira fights. Years ago, but yes. The Paulo Costa fight was fun. But anyway, sure. it's always exciting. And I just want to throw out there, I seen a thing on Instagram not too long ago, and they were asking, who are the biggest stars? Take Conor McGregor out of the equation. Who are the biggest stars in the UFC? And from what we saw on International Fight Week and kind of what we see online when we're perusing the exes of the world. And, I hate uh, that. Me too. I, I despise it. I hate that. But Instagram, all that kind of stuff, you see it. It's Charles Oliveira. And it's Israel Adesanya right yeah, now. Yeah, and I would say, at least in the U.S., distinctly Adesanya over 100%. Charles, yeah. I mean, they're, they're huge. Then, of course, on the other side of the world, you have Islam Makachev, who has a huge following as far as you know, current fighters are concerned. And then yeah. It's, it's really those guys. Yeah, absolutely. So, so big deal. And maybe that's part of the reason, and again, not, not to be always the Debbie Downer, but maybe that's part of the reason that I don't think like this is a stacked card for, it's, it's for a pay-per-view by any means. But I feel like that's why they did it, you know? I mean, it's Australia. You get Israel it's Australia. Adesanya on you the get card. the local fellas. You're gonna have that side of the world watching. You get Adesanya at the top of the card. You throw in a couple like favorites, especially from the area, Tai Tuivasa, right? Yeah. Like you throw in Manel Cap, like. But when you really break it down, like, it's, you know, name value wise, it's not. Yeah, great. it's not the greatest card yeah. for sure. It, it is a little lackluster, especially paying ninety bucks That's for a pay per view if you're doing that. Is you that know, what it is now? Ninety something like that. That's insanity. Anyways, aside from that, tell our good friends that are watching us where they can follow us and good. where they should be clicking and such. Good friends, thank you guys for watching first and foremost. If you're enjoying the content or you've enjoyed our previous content, go ahead and click the little subscribe button, ring the little bell. What's the sound? Beep. Something like that. You can also follow us on Instagram at the 107 mma I'm excited to be back. It's been a damn while. We skipped has, last week. We, we apologize did. for that. Yeah, we did. We some, did. some stuff was going on. Yeah. Yeah, and also, what a trash card. But yeah. anyways, this week we've got a decent card despite, like, if it was a fight night card, I would be, like, Israel Adesanya wouldn't be on it. Right. But overall, it's not that bad. No, it's decent. Anyway, first fight of the night, and these two guys look like, I feel like they, like, missed the bus yeah. for the last card because it's a Frenchman versus an Irishman. It's Kevin Jusset or Jusse. 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 Is it Jusse? It's probably Jusse. Probably. Yeah. Versus Kiefer Crosby. No. Thoughts? These guys are like leftovers, right? The, like, like, yeah. I, I, that ass feel like, like... It's like cold pizza. And, especially because like. they put them first. They're like, okay. Right. Like, like we forgot. Like, oops. Get, oops, get back home. Right. Like, you know? Exactly. Anyways, Kevin Jusse or Juice It or whatever. No, it's got to be Jusse. Jusse, baby. Eight and two fighter making his debut. He's obviously French from his name. Uh... 8-2 fighter, four wins by finish, four by decision. He's lost twice in his career, uh, once by KO, once by decision. He's a striker, good volume, loves to clinch against the cage. That's kind of what he aims for, decent takedowns against the cage. Uh, he's kind of slow and methodical from what I've seen. I haven't seen too much film on the guy, Yeah, but very slow. There wasn't a lot to see, honestly. Right. Yeah. He's not necessarily the most exciting fighter in the world, so you know it, it is what it is. Wish he would have fought in France. That would have probably been more, exci more exciting, and he definitely would have won because the French were winning last week. Yep, they he, sure were. You were really upset about that. Yeah, it bothers me. I hate those themed cards. Here's another themed card, by the way. Yeah, I, uh, me too, and yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, Kiefer Crosby's his opponent. He's Irish. 10-3, and three. he's a striker himself. Good pace, good volume, solid power. Gets a little brawly at times. Not a little. Gets very brawly at times. 
In his last fight before the UFC, he knocked out UFC veteran Cowboy Oliveira. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, take that for what it's worth. I I feel like we've seen more from Crosby. And he's obviously old, but like that Cowboy Oliveira was in his yeah, prime, I mean, a really good fighter. Absolutely, we've seen more from from Crosby uh, in terms of his dynamic ability, a higher level of comp. He's also fought Georgie Karakanyan, I believe that's how you say it. Bellator fame. Uh, he's super explosive, man. I'm going early KO for him. Late from, round from Crosby. Yeah, late round one, early round two. I think the more this fight drags, if it does end up dragging, the more it's in Jusay's favor. So I could see him winning a decision, but I'm going to trust the Irishman with a knockout. Yeah, this will be the first card in a hot minute that we've disagreed on the first fight. Yeah. I am going to go and take Jusay here. For me, I could see a finish by TKO for him. I just think low key he's better everywhere. Sure. For me personally. He doesn't have a ton of power, but he's more well-rounded, and he's got really good judo. I think the judo will help. He's been doing judo since he was four. So it, it's some, it's one of those things where it comes natural to him. Yeah. So n- neither, neither of these guys really stood out on tape, anything super special. But Kiefer's a fun fighter. Not For me, he doesn't always make the smartest decisions. Like you said, he gets a little brawly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that and... And Jusse seems seems to have a knack for surviving, even when he looks like the cards are stacked against him. So for me, I'm going to pick him to survive. I'm going to go Jusse by decision here. Let's get it. Moving on to the next fight of the night, it is your boy, yeah, Shane Young. You think so? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't actually think so, but I like to say it when personally, I can't. I really don't like Shane Young. I know. I am a big time not a fan. I don't think he's very good. And he's he- fighting Gabriel Miranda. Lost last time out, by the way, to your boy, Blake the Builder. He did. Mm-hmm. Well, Shane, Shane, you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And that was actually a pretty close fight, though. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, Blake Builder is not that good. Like, After like, last time. Like, yeah. you know, when you, when you see it, like, it's like, he's what, like he's, he's a guy I like for whatever reason, but nothing stands out. Like, I'll look really good at basketball playing your sister. But <laughs> exactly. I, you know. Tallest midget in the room kind there of sitch. Um, obviously, last time out, he lost to Benoit St. Denis. Listen, who's a dog by the my way? My God, we, dude! What is that I, guy about? I have to. This is one of those times where I have to like. I'm ashamed because that was a guy that I was yeah. high on. Yeah. When he came in off the bat. Yep. And then he had the loss, and I don't know. Like I kind of I didn't go against him. I said it was going to be a close fight, but I wish I would have picked him. Like I should have picked him. You You're know? talking about this week? No, versus uh, uh Bonfim. Uh, Bonfim, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I should. And I know when we did the video. I said it's going to be closer than people think. Yeah. He has a good chance to win, but I'm going to go Bonfim. Yeah. We've seen kind of Bonfim get exposed since then. But, yeah, anyway, that loss has obviously aged really well. For me, it really comes down to the fact that, listen, and and Shane Young is not that bad. We saw him against Blake Builder. He didn't look terrible. He looked pretty good. There's an argument to be be made that he he could have won the fight, but there was just specific moments where Builder took him down, did damage on the ground. But, you know. For me, there's nothing that he stands out in. So he doesn't have good takedowns. He shoots him at times, but like he couldn't get Builder down at all. He's okay everywhere, but literally nothing stands out. Like nothing at all. So terrible haircut. Not a fan of his style. For me, Gabriel Miranda is a submission ace. And I feel like Shane Young is the kind of guy that will lose to somebody that's so specialized. Sure. Gabriel Miranda, I don't want to say he held his own on the feet. got his ass kicked versus Benoit Saint-Denis. But, like, there were moments where he was doing okay for, like, a specialist. I have to go with Gabriel Miranda. I don't feel great about it. It's going to be very close. If it goes to decision, I see Shin Young winning. I just think Gabriel Miranda will be able to find a sub. Yeah. To me, this is a classic striker versus grappler matchup, right? Um, I I feel like Miranda should be able to take him down, uh, get him to the ground, get a sub. If his take his takedowns have been kind of lackluster though. Shane Young? Uh, no, uh, Miranda. Miranda. Yeah, I mean, like a he, lot of these Brazilian guys. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So he doesn't necessarily have the wrestling to get it there, but once it gets there, he yeah. is that guy, right? Yep. Um, if he's not able to do that, Shane Young could kick his ass. So it's tough for me to call. I agree with you though, man. I I, I just don't trust. I just don't trust Shane Young. I anymore. think that, um, and I feel like I'm biased in that. Yeah. And I could absolutely see him winning. I just there's he's never shown me anything exactly that has stood out except the insane face offs that he does with like right. the haka or sure. whatever he does yeah and like okay that's your culture right so. but yeah I'm with you man I'm going round two sub and that's back to back underdogs to start the card for me yeah yeah oh okay yeah all right I didn't pick an underdog the first time yeah you did yes okay fair moving on to the next fight of the night it is 
not that this is your boy. Maybe it is a your boy. It's Blood Diamond versus Charlie Radke at 170. Obviously, a city kickboxing guy. What do you think about this? So the first uh, city kickboxing guy, I believe, or is Shane Young? No, Shane Young's a CKB Shane Young, guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blood Diamond, man. He's he's a kickboxer. He has over a hundred professional kickboxing that's fights. That's insane. Yeah. So that's what he's about. Why is that a thing though? Like, I I just want to know, like, why are people so like? And I watch like Muay Thai fights. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't look like it does as much damage. It's weird, right? Why? Like, why? Like, yeah, they like, take like elbows, and, and I straight, watch them, like, and I'm like, oh yeah, that seems normal. Shots. And it's almost like they don't live in the same universe. Like the damage, yeah. the damage, like uh, what are they called? Yeah, uh, it's like decrease, like the sliders. The sliders, thank you. Yeah, like I, I thought it was sliders, and in my mind, I was like, am I just fat? Like, am I just like it's right, like, a, it's of, like a slider. White Castle? Yeah. Shout out White Castle. <laughs> no, ew. <laughs> but dude, isn't it? No, dude, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy just took four elbows to the face. And he's standing and, and like, like throwing kicks, three head kicks, and like throwing teeth kicks, bombs, and there's like 185, and you're like, seems seems okay. Yeah. Like, and and then you, he's I, ready to fight next month. He's fighting again, so because he's well, fighting a hundred times. That's how you, that's how you, that's how you get. Years, that's yeah. how you get to hundred fights. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. It, it is crazy, but a hundred professional kicks. I'm glad you fights. agree with that, by yeah, the way, because we've never talked about that. But that's but something that's always tweaked me out. Right, because it, it's funny because I'll watch. I watch a ton of one, and even the women, by the way. Oh yeah, I mean. Muay Thai and kickboxing are crazy. I watch a ton of One FC. Yeah, they do a lot of those cards, as you know, that are like an MMA fight, right? right. A kickboxing and I love that. Fight, some I grappling. do love that. It, it, yeah, it's amazing. Shout out One. I love that but, shit. Under the most underrated promotion. Yeah, currently. it's a phenomenal yeah. promotion. But they'll have a bunch of Muay Thai fights on a card. I'll watch them. Sometimes they're on it like like Friday mornings yeah, yeah, or like yeah, Saturday yeah. mornings at like five a.m., six a.m. Yep. They start. But anyways. The guys will be taking stupid damage, and it's nothing happens. It goes to decision. Then the next fight's an MMA fight, and the guy takes a shot that's way less than right. that and gets knocked. And out. like the gloves don't like the Muay Thai gloves aren't sixteen ounces. Like they don't look that. I mean, they'll, they'll do kickboxing gloves with like the big. They're gloves, a little bit, but, but like, then they'll do Muay Thai gloves with MMA gloves. They'll right. fight Muay Thai with MMA gloves. Right, so it and makes like, no sense. And it's all good. Yeah, I, I don't know. But anyways, Blood Diamond, hundred professional kickboxing fights in MMA. Though he is only three and two. So five fights, he's... That's got to be the worst record of any fighter, percentage-wise, mm-hmm. that's, like, still in the UFC as a man. Yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, he came into the UFC at 3-0. He no, obviously I know. lost his first two fights. I know. Um, he, he came in because he was Izzy's friend, right? This whole card basically revolves around, are you Adesanya's friend or are you Volk's friend? And Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, obviously he's a really good striker. Um, no ground game to speak of. His, his takedown defense is the only, like, saving grace when it comes to his ground game. It's okay. Again, that's it's nothing to write home about. He was able to defend a ton of takedowns from Jeremiah Wells, who is a very good wrestler, and Orion Kose, who is a solid wrestler right. himself. No surprise what Blood Diamond wants to do. He wants to keep the fight standing and win a striking battle. So he loses his first two fights because of grapplers. And what does the UFC do? Hey, here's another grappler. His name's Charlie Ratke. He's a heavy grappler making his promotional debut. Great nickname, Chuck wow. Buffalo. I have that written that down, That is really too. good. That I, is I, I was hoping you wouldn't mention that. That's literally <laughs> the last thing I've written down, so I didn't forget to mention it. Chuck right. Buffalo Chuck is... Buffalo's fire. But anyway, he's really athletic. He does a good job looking for subs, maintaining ground control, good on the ground, decent power on the feet. But he is far behind when it comes to the stand-up. His cardio is also pretty sus. Um, and that's kind of what gives me hope for Blood Diamond, right? I'm taking Blood Diamond. He's at plus 200. I'm going to take the way better striker over the way better grappler. I think Blood Diamond probably stuffs an early takedown Wrong. and then knocks him out in the first. Wrong. Wrong. Okay. I mean, no, nah, I'm just I'm kidding. You're, you're, this is why we do this, right? I'm trusting like, Blood. I feel that. For me, this is one of the easier fights on the card to pick. I get it. And it's going to look easy for whoever wins it is how I think Can this I finish? fight works. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> No, I think, I'm sorry. This, I think this fight's going to look really easy for the guy that wins it. Okay. And it's it's very similar to the main event last week, which we didn't get to talk about. But Sergey had a chance at beating Cyril Gaon. Yeah. And it was we gonna, both had Gaon. Yes, we did. Winning, yeah. It was, it My was, finish. It was going to look very easy if he beat Cyril Gaon. Because he was going to take him down right the away. Because are so different. Right. right. He was yeah, going to yeah. take him down and just ground and pound. It's, and it it's was whoever be imposed their will and game plan. Yeah. And then on the feet, they were so far apart. I kind of think that's how this is. So whoever wins this fight, they're going to make it look really easy. Yeah. And the other guy looks like he doesn't belong. Sorry for cutting you off. No, I was, I was messing with you, man. But cut me off anytime. But for me, I agree with you. Uh, so, no, I'm fucking with you. Please. Yeah. I'm just playing. So, uh, no, for me, like, you're right. Obviously, Blood Diamond with the experience that he has, the kickboxing acumen, for me, 
of course, not just for for anybody. He is obviously on on paper the better striker. Yeah. The and Radke's obviously the better grappler. He, Radke is the better, the more well-rounded fighter. Let's be real. Yeah. I wish Radke was younger. To be honest with you, he's thirty-one, I believe. I I really really enjoyed what he was the guy on this card. That, Thirty-three. Wow. Yeah, but blood's thirty-five. I know, but I fucking yeah. hate that dude. Yeah. That really upsets me. Because, I don't know, man. I, I really, really enjoyed watching him. For me, of, of the people on this card, even the last couple cards, I would say, he was one of my favorite fighters that I've watched. And it's the intangibles for me. He's got the intangibles. So he's better on the ground. And for me, like he just won the um, the title at CFFC. Yeah. And he was a big underdog there. He was fighting a guy who was like 8-0, I believe. Forrest, yeah. Right. So... It's the intangibles on the feet for me. I feel like he goes for the kill. Whereas Blood Diamond, he's he, I've seen him... I haven't watched his kickboxing fights, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. But for his MMA fights, he seems too hesitant for somebody who has the skill advantage on the feet. How much of that is being afraid of the takedown? But that's what I'm saying. But whatever it is, like Charlie Redke can get him down. Yeah. So, you know, for me, like that's the difference. I wish he was younger. He's got power in his hands. I mean, I've seen him drop people. He doesn't need a big windup, dude. I've like I've seen him drop people from a quick check hook, a jab. He knocked out a guy with a jab two fights ago. I yeah. want to say he's got power where he doesn't have to telegraph it. He doesn't have to wind it up. And Blood Diamond for me doesn't have that kind of power, at least in, in MMA. So better grappler, better better striker, but there's more intangibles on the side of Charlie Radke for me. I'm gonna go with Chuck Buffalo. I'm going to go with a late second round finish. I'm going to go TKO, but could go either way, to be honest with you. Yeah, easily. Yeah, in a tough battle, though. I do think it's going to be a tough fight. If it goes to decision, which I easily could see, it's going to be 29-28. Okay. So, um, anyway, that was maybe a little bit long-winded. I just really, I really did enjoy watching Charlie Redke's tape. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, next fight on the card, it's Nazrat Hakparast versus, which, what an anomaly that guy is. Versus newcomer Landon Quinones. Landon Quinones was on the Ultimate Fighter, mm-hmm. right? He yep. was, yeah, like he was like the guy that personality-wise stood out amongst yes. a lot of them, you know. Which is why he, yeah, he gets here. Kind of weird that he's here. He lost on the Ultimate Fighter, so it's like if this is the show and it was trash, why is he here? He got fit, like finished in the first round, right? Yeah. So you know, kind of weird. I get it though. Maybe it's the personality. Maybe it's like the fact that he was a fan favorite, like I just said. They got to add some guys from the show. You know what I mean? It, yeah. You, you know what? You're right because that would even decrease the 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 like sturdiness of the show yeah. as it yeah, is. Yeah, it's worth. You know. Yep. So I can see this being a boring fight. To be quite honest with you, Nazra Hackpress. He's such an anomaly, man. Like he wins really like fights that you wouldn't expect him to he loses to people you wouldn't expect him to he's got some power not crazy but he's got some power for sure not the most technical guy most of his fights seem to like suppose he's got a decent ground game but most all of his fights end up standing so yeah. for me both of these guys can be a little bit hesitant at times i think i just believe in hack press more especially knowing that kinona has just lost to a guy who couldn't make it in the ufc you yeah. know so his losses are against decent competition. I don't see a finish in this one. If I'm going to bet anything, I would probably bet that, that this goes to decision. Okay. Neither guy has real one-punch stopping power. I see a battle on the feet with low output, to be quite honest with you, with Hack Rast edging it out eventually, 29-28. So, I, I mean, ultimately we get to the same place. I am picking Nazareth Hack Rast, but I, I disagree with a couple things. I, I think I don't like the matchmaking here at all. I think this is a complete mismatch, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. It's poor matchmaking. I think Nazar Hackpress is a much more proven fighter. He for he sure is, is better. He's fought way better competition. No question. I'm seeing a finish for him here. Really? Yeah. I think a, a return to form of sorts. I guess it's, for me order. it was the fact that like he never like okay the the intangibles that I was just talking about with uh, Radke yeah is the things that I don't see. And hack press, yeah. But skill wise, on the feet, hack press for sure better. That's what I'm saying. You know right? what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So he is the better fighter here, and he looks like Gastelum. So he looks just like him. Afghan Gastelum. Bro, he looks like Venusaur, Bulbasaur, like Venusaur, right. Ivysaur, Bulbasaur, like right. Evolution. Just, shout out Pokemon. Cejudo. 
<laughs> so, we have a picture. Hey, it's with a, Cejudo and Gastelum. It's Cejudo, Heck Perez, <laughs> Gastelum. Gastelum. So Cejudo's Bulbasaur in this. <laughs> And then Heck Brass is Ivy Sword. He is, he is. We need to put up a graphic of that, of the th- the three evolutions. I'm down. Of both of them. Let's get but it. But that's fucking up. Hey, that's perfect, dude. I like it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on to the next fight. It's my boy. He's not. I, no. I, I'm really not a fan. Jamie Malarkey Malarkey. versus old ass John McDessie, who he's kicking, man. Yeah, he's out there. He's, he's kicking. But for me... This is one of the easier fights to call, too. Mac Desi, man, listen, he looked pretty good against... Who was it? Um, he looked pretty good against... His last fight was against Hack Press. He lost, but he beat Ignacio Bahamundes. Bahamundes, dude. Yeah. And I know Bahamundes lost recently again, too, yes. but maybe he's not what we thought he was, but still, man, at, at that age, to take on... Some, and, and Bahamundes was maybe a little too young at the time, mm-hmm. but listen, Mac Desi's in the twilight of his career... 38 years old. I give props to him, man. Like I said, beat Baja Mondes. Like, huge win. He's like, good. looking back on it now, I just don't see a world where, where Malarkey loses this. He's nine years younger. He's got the reach advantage. This is going to take place on the feet. McDessie might have the better power. Like, I don't know if he still does. The power is the last right. to go. But we've seen it. We saw him. We, we've seen him drop better fighters. So, four inches of height, six inches of reach, you know, that's the biggest difference for me. And again, 38 years old. If Jamie Malarkey loses this, Dino. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. You know? Come on. Like, Jamie Malarkey should win this. Everybody should be picking him. I'm going to go 30-27 decision for Malarkey in a fight that takes place purely on the feet. Again, so same that same place we get to, different roads. I am taking Malarkey by decision. Um, my idea behind it is that... I don't know. I, I think it's a lot closer than you think it is. Like, to me, I don't believe too much in Jamie Malarkey. And I know that's why I, you I, ended I, I by saying... Exa- I don't at all. Right. But for so me, that's it's why like, I'm dude, not so come, comfortable come on. with it. Like, yeah, that's why I'm not so comfortable with it. Both guys have faced really high competition, really high-level competition. Uh, for Malarkey, Ferez ZM, Brad Riddell, Jalen Turner. He fought Volkanovski. Uh, for Megdesi, a, a ton of other guys on on his. Let's take a look at that really quick. Eighteen and eight is not a great record, but sixteen and six isn't like the best record either. Yeah, you know? but I mean, good names: Nazar Hackperas, Ignacio Bahamundes, Trinaldo, some some decent guys. Lando Venata, for what that's worth. Cowboy, Yancy Maderos. Yeah. But, but yeah, anyways, I, I am going Malarkey in front of the home crowd. He's a lot younger, and you're right though. I, I like how you ended that with if he loses this fight. Like that changes. Yeah, like, I'm over. I already am not high on him. Same. If he loses this fight, he's Shane Young levels for me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You good to move on? Please. All right. <laughs> Please. Moving on to the next fight on the cord. It is Jack Jenkins versus Chepe Mariscal. Fucking barn burner. This is one of my favorite fights on here, yeah. and for me, it's also one of the toughest to call. If you will recall. Yes. I did take Chepin Mariscal versus Trevor Peak. My when, boy, yeah. When, when nobody was picking him, basically. Yeah. You picked Peak? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt very strongly about it. And that goes to show you, like, for me, I saw something in him and I still believe it. Also, I'm really, like, when you really break it down, I wasn't going out on that much of a limb. If you look at Chepin Mariscal, like, who he's fought, he's 14 UFC and 6. Guys, yeah. It's not the best record, but, like, he, he fought Joanna Zambrito. Yes, he got knocked out in the first round, but he got a win over Yusuf Zalal. He lost to Bryce Mitchell, but he went. It went to decision. Sean so, Soriano, right? So Steve Garcia, yeah, that's crazy. Trevor Peak, which by the Pat way, Sabat- I, he has a re- win over Pat Sabatini. That, sorry, that, that's the one I was looking yeah. for. Thank you. He has a win over Pat Sabatini. Is Pat Sabatini who we thought when he first came in? No, but he's still really good, dude. It's a crazy resume. Losses to Bryce Mitchell and uh, Gillespie. Also, I, I, I don't want to misquote this or misspeak, but I believe that he was like a D2 standout in wrestling. I think he was I like All-American so. D2, something like that, or D3. So he's got really good wrestling. This is a really tough one for me. And not just from an analytical standpoint, but also from the standpoint of, I just really like both of these guys. I love how they fight. I re- well, By the way, did you rewatch the Mariscal versus yeah. Peak fight? Yep. How fucking fun was that to it's rewatch? A, yeah, I mean, it's a good fight. And also, Trevor Peak is literally insane. He literally, like... Like scoots. I love he, he scoots and like I'm throwing yeah. this goddamn haymaker. He has like no type of like. But Mariscal's defensive movements, 
Yeah, he's, he's insane, better. dude. He's the better fighter. There were right? times where Trevor Peak was swinging at air. So yeah, we know Jack Jenkins. We've seen him already. He's got great boxing, really crisp. We know about the leg kicks. The yeah. leg kicks is Jack Jenkins is like what he's known for. Right. So, you know, I think Chepe is smart enough to to where the leg kicks won't be the deciding factor for me. This one is so tough, man. I've gone back and forth. We know the boxing of, of Jack Jenkins. Sometimes I wish he would make more adjustments, Jack Jenkins, along yeah. the way. I feel like he 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 has his game plan and he sticks to it hard. And then we sometimes we rag on fighters for not sticking to the game plan. Right. But we're not boxed in, right? I'm saying to an extent, right? If you notice something, your coach is like, you should implement the changes. So for me, you know, that's the biggest thing. Can Mariscal, Mariscal will adjust. He's a smart enough fighter. He's going to learn. The wrestling, I feel like Mariscal is actually the better wrestler. When I, before I went into this, I thought Jack Jenkins was going to, on paper, be the better wrestler. I yeah, I mean, he, he he's good. I don't think he is. This is super tough for me to predict. One thing that I... I would definitely say I don't see a finish in this. Okay. And I think this is going to be the closest fight of the night. For me, I genuinely don't think there's a chance we get a finish. I'm leaning Chepe Mariscal right now, but it's literally like 52-48. Okay, so I, I just want to throw in something about Jack Jenkins really quickly. First of all, great mustache. Oh, sexy there's mustache. That. Secondly, I do think he's an underrated fighter, in my humble opinion. I, I think he's better than people realize he is. You know I was on the train off the bat. I know, yeah. I know you were. And as far as Chepe, Chepe is concerned, absolute dog, super duper wall rounded. You mentioned losses to super high level competition. That's what I'm saying. Like the level is crazy. Even if he lost, like you went to decision with like some top level. That's what I'm know, saying. Like, so he impressed the hell out of me last time out. I know he's a your boy. I'm in. I'm I'm hopping on the train. Let's go, I am dude. Poor Chepe. Hell yeah! I think he's our boy now. I don't know why I love that. I, I love buy that me so happy right yeah, now. Yeah, man, I, I buy it. It's risky. It's a crazy fight. Again, this is the closest close. one so far. I would say. And I am also taking Chepe by decision in what I believe will be a fight of the night, guaranteed. Yeah. We always say this a disclaimer. This has like the pre, the pretenses, pre whatever it's called. To be a fight of the year kind of thing. It, like with the small, with the no-name guys. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. There's always like the huge name guys that win fight of the year. Yeah, yeah. And then there's always one or two fights that sneaks in. Obviously, you're, you know, throwing shit at the wall yeah. when you say that. But this has everything that you need pre-fight to be that kind of fight. Yes. Yeah. And you're you're going out on a limb maybe there a little bit. That's what I'm saying. I know but, it sounds nuts. I'm not but, holding it against you. Right. Chepe's on a four-fight win streak. Listen, Chepe's a guy where like... This is one of the few guys where, like, I, most of the people that we review that aren't well-known, that are making their debuts, whatever, I'm like, because this guy. Or not always, but I'm like, I'm more leaning to, like, that rather than, like, this guy's sick. He should have yeah. been here for years. Exactly. Like, Chepe is like, what happened? Yeah. Why hasn't he been here? So. It just is what it is. This, is. this has fight of the night potential all over it. You said it perfectly. Moving on to the next fight and... Man, it gets kind of, it gets, like, maybe not for the casuals, but yeah. it gets kind of juicy now. It yeah. does. After, I agree. The last fight, too, obviously, we just hyped it up. But number seven fight of the night, Carlos Ulberg versus Da Un Jung at 205. Two big-ass boys. What do you think about this one? Carlos Blackjack Ulberg, man. He is big-bodied as shit. He's big as hell for 205. Dude's got a hog, for sure. 100% got a hog. There's he's, no he, he, fu- That dude fucks. You think so? Oh, he fucks. Probably. Dude. No, he fucks. Probably. He's a fucking unit. I almost I'll hit my vape that. right now. Just, just say, After I said he fucks, dude, if I ripped my vape, that would have been like, this that guy's a chat. That would fit the yeah. character, 100%. Yep. He's on a four-fight win streak in the UFC. He would be undefeated, but he lost to Kennedy. We mentioned that before. First of all, Kennedy, obvious, my boy. Shout out, Kennedy. But Kennedy almost is exclusively... He almost exclusively serves... To confuse you about other fighters that he fights. Yeah. So you don't know how good they and are. And does he not do that for you in this fight? Because he knocked out Olberg and then the weirdest knockout ever against Daung Jung. No, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And the fact that both of them have fought him, it's like yeah. that perfectly encapsulates more than them two, yeah. Kennedy as a trick as a fighter. It's like, yeah. what happened, dude? I don't know, man. The Daung Jung knockout was... One of the weirdest you'll ever see. Off the top of my mind, the only other one that I could think about that's even close is Johnny Walker versus... Yeah. Um, Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill, yeah. When he just inflating. He was just like tube man or whatever. Like, wacky waving arm, flailing inflatable tube man. Yeah, like, shout out family guy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly that. 
But Oberg has huge power, man. He's talented as hell. He looks the part, right? Looks it, dude. And he he's a legit prospect. And like, have, if Vince McMahon was heading the UFC, he'd be like... Fighting for this, guy's, this guy. This guy's a heel fighting yeah. for the title soon. Come on out, you rapist! <laughs> and then he's fighting, not that Carl Zilberg is a no. We don't disclaimer. Know I don't we, know that. Yeah, we don't know anything about him like that. Then he's fighting Down Young. Down Young is actually very good. I feel like he's underrated, but I do feel like his time is running out. He That's is a the big younger, fucking Korean dude. I just want to say that he is huge. He is six foot four. Yeah, he, humongous for uh, in the ring. Korean in the octa looks fucking massive. He looks huge. It's weird because I feel like his time is running out, even though he's the much younger fighter here. He, I think is he like, really? I think he's like three or four years younger. He's twenty nine years old. Don't say that to me. Um, but he just kind of seems like he's on the decline, right? He's on a losing streak. He lost. Well, it's, du- it's the experience difference too, right? Holy shit, ninety five percent on topology. I mean, it, and it makes sense, right? He lost to Dustin Jacoby last time out, who also beat Kennedy. Which go figure. Uh, Dustin Jacoby's another one of those guys. That's where I'm, I'm like, saying. is he good or is he not good? Like he lost to Devin Clark before that. For me, I'm going based off of the eye test, and it seems like that's what tapology people are doing as well. Ninety five uh, to five. You think? Uh, yeah, Blackjack Olberg. I lost my notes here, but let's see. Blackjack Olberg round one KO. Round one. Okay. Yeah. I I think he'll survive past. Uh, Down Young will survive past that. Okay. But dude, I just want to talk about Down Young's record real quick. First of all, very handsome man, and also six foot four. Art. Let me ask you this. Yeah. I feel like Koreans are the biggest Eastern Asian people. Like thoughts. Yeah, man. They're like the they're like the Dutch slash like Yugoslavs of of, their of like yeah maybe you feel me yeah. China obviously has the population, so they're I'm sure there are more right. taller. There's like Yao Ming guys. But percentage wise, I feel like Koreans are big, dude. Like yes, I, they're we went to school, we went to high school with a ton of Koreans, pretty pretty big big boys, some big boys that were Korean. Kijima Pangu. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I think I mean stop farting. Anyway, Dao Yung, like the Devin Clark fight was pretty close, and Devin Clark is another guy. Like maybe that's just a light heavyweight division. Two or five makes no. Where sense. you're like, I don't know who these guys are. Like yeah, and then Dustin Jacoby, same thing, and then he beat there's a trick who beat Will Knight. Which I know he's obviously like fallen off. Like we've all lowered our expectations after the. Well, they cut him. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and as they as they should have. But Mike Rodriguez, I've never been high on him. But and Will Knight, I didn't know the sorry. He no, just lost okay. another fight, uh, in some random promotion. Who lost to Marcin Prochnia? That was Will Knight. Oh, true. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought I was like, what the? F- how am I missing this here? Anyway, yeah. For me, man, I, you know, the biggest difference is obviously the kickboxing. Carlos Ulbricht also throws his strikes with intent to hurt, you know? Mm-hmm. And Carlos Ulbricht was a guy, when he first came in, I was like, I need this guy to be good. I saw When I saw his style, I'm like, I need this guy to become a my guy. Yeah. Like, I wanted to hitch my wagon to his, to, or hitch, hitch onto his wagon, whatever you got to say. But for me, one question with Carlos Ulbricht, is he chinny? Because we've seen him rocked. So if he's not that chinny... Dallin Young is dangerous in his own right, but I just don't see a... Like, he's not going to... Like, Carl Zilberg's grappling is underrated. Mm-hmm. Dallin Young is not, like, a world-class grappler, you know? For, so, for me, is the size difference... Like, Ulberg's never fought somebody in the UFC that's, this like, same size as him, and he this guy is. Yeah. So, what's the what's the reach, by the way? Can you tell me that? Reach advantage is to Dallin Young by an inch but, and a half. By an inch and a half? Yeah. By, to Dallin Young, very interesting. And height yeah. is equal. The, and and on on uh, on tabology it has it as black jag. I always thought it was blackjack, like the, the card black game, jag. like a jaguar, what? or just some of that. There's no, like, isn't that just a, a panther, my guy? That's a jag, dude. Oh, pff. that's Chicago lingo for the. True. If you know, you know. Yeah, you know, is Young is really good in the clinch. I appreciate that about him. So my only question is like, is Olberg Chinny? Is he going to be able to handle a guy as big as him, or even he's probably? I feel like Dallin Young is going to be heavier yeah. by like 10, 15 pounds on fight night. He's he's thick, like he's not he's as a lean. Thick boy, yeah. So not that he's like fat or anything, but so is he going to be able to? Is Ulber going to be able to handle somebody bigger, heavier, potentially weighing on him in the clinch? And for me, I feel like he will. Ulber just throws with such vicious intent. I feel like he's also improved, man. I feel like I've I've watched him improve every fight, so. He's older, but I think he has less experience. Yeah, he has less experience. So, for me, I'm going with Alberg too, man. I, by finish? I don't know. Did you say by finish? First round. First round? That's crazy, but I'm going to go second round. 
Second round knockout. Let's get it. I feel like, I'm sorry, I took too long on that one. Anyway, moving up the card, fight eight is... Main card. Main card. Woo! Tyson Pedro versus... The Pleasure Man. The Pleasure Man. Remember we had that conversation. We forgot the nickname last time. That's, we were talking about, like, we, Pleasure Boy. That's, we like, made it a point man. to fucking mention it now because yeah. the greatest nickname in all of sports, <laughs> The so? Pleasure Man, he gave his opponent a little kissy kiss. I don't um, think it's the greatest nickname. I think you're way off base. I'm just, it's, it's just, it's I think just, you're what, what do you, it's, what is it called? It's, uh. Pandering. No, dude, it's, um. Because that's nuts. No, god damn it, what is the word? Oh. Sucking up to. Oh, whatever, forget it, god damn it. By the that's way, really if you me. guys can think of a better name, which, a better nickname, which there are thousands of in this MMA community. Thousands of? You're t- Put you're it tripping in the, the little pleasure comments man? down there. It's a good nickname. I, I'm exaggerating with the thousands. There's better nicknames. Get out of your mind. Put them down there. Blackjack. He's, right before. He's fighting Tyson Pedro, which Tyson Pedro is like a cool name, I guess. I expect like a... If I met a guy named Tyson Pedro, I expect him to be like pretty attractive, I would say. And very tough. Tough. So tough? Yeah. Like Justin Tuffa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tyson Pedro, another city kickboxing guy. To me, he's like the one city kickboxing guy that is like... He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. And a Japanese jiu-jitsu black belt. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen this motherfucker grapple? No. Never. So, for me, listen. On the ground, credentials-wise, Pedro should be better. On the feet, kind of a toss-up to me. But Pedro should be better. But mm-hmm. for me, Turkali is tough as hell, man. His chin, he fought Vitor Petrino last fight, right? Yeah. He got caught like 10 times with the hardest shots that this guy's threw. Throw. And Vitor Petrino, as we know, he likes he's to dabble with the He's yoked and he's juice. knocked up. Um, if, okay, currently in the UFC, if anybody is juiced up. It's him. Oh, my God. Are you yeah. kidding me? No, I'm with you. I, also, he, that dude looks like he's hella dumb. Hella dumb. Okay. That's mean. That's super mean. But he's probably pretty dumb. For me, I could see Pedro winning the first round. His cardio is not great. I could see him gassing out. For me, it's, again, the intangibles. Turkali is tough as hell. Has a goddamn granite chin. Dare I say, maybe one of the best in the division. Just from seeing him take those shots for Petrino mm-hmm. and seeing what Petrino has done before to other people. He's, he's probably, on paper, he's not better anywhere. But something in me is like, Turkali's winning this fight. He looked he looked like he had some semblance of something against, um, what's it, Robocop? Yeah. And then Petrino's tough ass, like... It was Jolton Almeida, not Robocop. I'm sorry, yeah, thank yeah. you. Same guy, a different yeah. division to me. Right. Like... But, yeah, I mean... But like, shit, what a hand to be dealt, right? Tough as hell. Like, and you know what? You know what? Maybe another reason I'm going is just because I love the Pleasure Man. Do you think he gave him a kiss, by the way? No, what are you talking about? Do you think Turkali gave Vitor Petrino a little kiss in the third round? Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Because at first, I, when I watched it live, I was like, he did, dude. Yeah. And then I was like, when I watched it like the recent, I was like, yeah. is he adjusting his mouth guard? I don't know, but... I hope he did give him a little kiss for Shout me. Out kisses. Those vibes, <laughs> yeah. uh, those vibes. Like if you're that kind of guy, like yeah, it's funny. He's like a gold dust, like kind of like. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I'm going for Kali by dust. decision, man. I just I can't I can't pick against him. And also, I really don't want him to lose because he would have what then three losses yeah, on paper it in a gets row. Cut. I don't want to see that. So, so I'm going to Kali. Look, I'm with you, man. I, I'm also taking Anton Turkali by decision here, 29-28. I think he probably drops the first and then picks up the next two rounds to win it. That's exactly how I have it, too. He, you know, he's surprisingly good on the ground. He has good submission skills. He's he never looked out of place anywhere. Anywhere. Getting punched in the face. And he's a really good on striker. On the ground. Like, yeah. Right. He's a really good striker. He fights 100 miles per hour. He's, By the way, odds, minus 130 to, uh, for uh, Pedro. Yeah. Plus, yeah. plus 110. A lot of dogs that we're taking on this card. For me, the biggest difference is the speed at which Anton Sercali fights. He puts on a stupidly high pace, and Pedro... Pedro's hesitant. Pedro's hesitant, and his cardio is definitely not Anton Turkali's cardio. Yeah. So that's kind of no, why I'm no, taking No him, question, yeah. dude. No question. That's and, all? I, and yeah, I do want to see him in, stay in the UFC, so I really do. three is a, you know, the nail in the coffin pretty much. I really do. I really do. Moving on to the next fight, it's Justin Taffa versus Austin Lane. This is a rebooking of a fight that happened, what, a month ago? month Six weeks ago, something like that? A little further back, yeah. Maybe two months ago? It was in June, yeah. Okay, fucking excuse me, bro. God damn. Just giving you guys the facts. You're just gonna, inter- like, you're just gonna like, correct me in front of our friends? Like, <laughs> I was trying to save face. 
But, yes. You think if you were in wrestling, would you be a face or a heel? Oh, come on. You know the answer to You're that. You're a heel. I'm a heel or yeah. like a, like a, and like a, like a tweener where it's like the, like people love me because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll say some nonsensical shit. Right. But like. You're like the anti-establishment face. If you're like a face. Jericho, okay, like a like a Steve Austin, like a Stone like Cold, them. you know, like yeah, like you know. Yeah. And I'm not saying like the level of them, right? You think you could draw heat? Like, let's say you had the good. Could wrestling. I draw heat? Yeah. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? I'm just you saying. know? No, I'm, I'm just asking. I could. What do you think? I could. Oh my god! First of all, I would much prefer. Yeah. Like, yeah, here's yeah. the thing. I couldn't cut, like, a good guy promo. How about that? The only type of good guy promo I could cut is, like, The Rock, where he's, like, roasting somebody or okay. something like that. Pandering like, to the crowd. I would have to be, like, a scumbag good guy. Like, <laughs> there's no... But I could cut a heel promo? Right now, I could cut one. Damn. That's how I felt. I want to throw something. Next time. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Heel promo all day, dude. Oh, my God. What's... Okay, give... By the way, rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. R.I.P. Bray Wyatt. One of my f- my wow, favorite I know, yeah. of the wrestlers of the last like yeah. ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Listen, not to get political. I don't want to say. It. Yeah, don't, I don't want to stay out of it. Hey, I just want to say, man, Bronny, this guy. What's uh the Bills uh? Demar Hamlin. What's happening? All of a sudden, these young athletes, healthy dudes. Heart problem? I don't know. Okay. Just saying, <laughs> we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose eight to ten followers from that alone. There, there that goes. <laughs> anyway, Justin Toffa Austin Lane rebooking of a fight. The fight. The last fight happened thirty seconds in. What happened was Austin Lane got obviously. Austin Lane. I'm sorry. Yeah. Toffa got uh, super terribly eye swiped, mm-hmm. and it wasn't one of those where it was bad, like where he was like being a bitch about it. Right. He was... wanted to fight. Clearly, like it was. Couldn't see. They needed to end it. What a shitty way to get, like, a one no contest on your record. Like, yeah. But what do you think? I literally copy and pasted from the from last, last video. Time, yeah. Because to me, it's the same exact fight. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it because this is... I've dubbed this the rematch no one asked for. They never should have booked it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Tafa's the better, more technical fighter, Dino. It's heavyweight. Anyone could swing and touch the other person and knock him out. But I'm trusting Justin Tafa. Um, people were saying Austin Lane was kind of like winning that round, which I don't get. It was 30 seconds. Right, I don't get. But yeah, Tafa first round KO. Um, you, you get close to him, you make a mistake, you're going to pay for it, you're going to sleep. I'm taking Tafa. Yeah, I, Ta- Justin Tafa in the heavyweight division is up there. Would you say he's the third hardest striker in the heavyweight division currently? On the UFC roster, I wouldn't say that because I haven't thought about it. Sure, but sure. yes, the dude and, and I didn't hammers. either. But I went out on a limb to be a little controversial. Yeah, see, I'm not like that. I don't like controversy. <laughs> Yo, okay. I'm very like Derek Lewis. Obviously, is up there. Yeah. He's in the top three. Yeah. Ta- I don't know. For me, Tafa has I to mean, be up there. Pavlovich there. is. Yeah. Guaranteed one, Vasa. one or two. Tui Vasa. No, I, mean, I would yeah. say Ty is in there, top yeah. three right now. I mean, it, it, to me, it's Pavlovich won by far. Over, okay, fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what? Because the volume itself, like, he's not going to throw, maybe he doesn't have the one-punch power, but every punch has power. That's what I'm saying. So, listen, I actually went the opposite way, man. I, I, I agreed with you the first time around. I was going Tafa with a knockout. Yeah. And I know it was super short, like, and Austin Lane's the older fighter, too. But, man, he looked explosive. He looked light on his feet. Mm-hmm. He looked fast. The hand speed... Like, he was getting to the, and, like, he threw a nice leg, or a nice body kick. I don't know, man. I like the body kicks. I like the hand speed. I think I think I flipped, man. I think I'm going Austin Lane by decision here. Like I said, went originally Justin Taffa by KO, too. But the reach advantage, the speed advantage, the output. Taffa literally is, does this. Yeah. And he's, like, and he, like he, he calculates. He, never, he doesn't telegraph, but mm-hmm. he, he just does this. And then he's going to, like, he throws very low output. So, for me... One of the few heavyweight fights I don't see going to a finish. I'm going, yeah, Austin Lane by the Also, season. really weird, I want to throw this out there. Austin Lane, a Florida guy, the last fight was in Miami. And then now they've switched, and it's like a home and away, and he's fighting in Australia. Oh, against shit, the yeah. the Australian Tafa. Damn. For Damn. what that's worth. All right. True. True. That's interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. Moving on to the next fight of the night, and this is random to me, but it's Manel Cap versus... Felipe Dos Santos 
who I believe is making his UFC debut at this point. Yeah. What do you think about this one? Uh, he's stepping in for... This was supposed to be Kai Car France. Which, oh my goodness. Legit. That would have been finally Cap fighting up. Yeah. They're giving him a chance to fight up. Would have been an uh, absolute banger. Who would you have taken in that? Man, dude. It, it's tough. It's a tough one. Because he, you know I like Kai Car a lot. Right. And you know I'm a huge Manel Cop guy. The thing with me with Manel Cop is I think he is good enough to beat any flyweight on the planet. There's, it's not you think. He for he, sure is. There's no he, question. He's the good power enough. that he generates mm-hmm. and the striking acumen, no question. He's good enough to beat any flyweight on the planet. But there's a reason he's lost six he, times. He can also lose to guys that are like top yeah. 20 level. But so. he has looked improved. And I know that that's like a hearsay. Like yeah. It's a thing everybody says. It's That's the equivalent of like... Best shape of his life and and yeah. and, and, and OTA is like you right. know what I mean like, yeah. like sorry Manel Cop very good striker man he's flashy he's fast he's powerful good footwork he is a former Ryzen champ which is a very good promotion his biggest flaw is that he sometimes gets too flashy and he oftentimes fights down to his competition yeah so I mentioned I think he could lose to so many people but I think he can beat anyone in the world. He's taking on Diego or Felipe Dos Santos, who's making his debut here. Well, there's on, too many of them. Pretty sure, right? There's there's a ton of Dos Santos. Like, and you're all blonde. Come on. So he's a shoot the box guy, right? He's a shoot the box Diego Lima guy. Um, he fights exactly like you would expect anyone from shoot the box Diego Lima to fight. What does that mean, Dino? It means that he's very dangerous on the feet, but he's very hittable and he's very dangerous on the ground. I'm dangerous. Ooh. I drank the juice. Shout Sorry. out Easy F. What does the F stand for? Fala Galera in this instance <laughs> is what it stands for. You know, I just, I just wanted Wait, to what did, sure. F, yeah. what did the F stand Oftentimes, for? Oftentimes, it just stands for anything, really. Whatever you feel oh, like. Oh, he always switches it up. That's what I'm but saying. But Fala Galera, Galera was amazing. That's what it is here. I don't mind Dos Santos' chances here, is all I'm going to say. But I'm taking Manel Cop, or as my computer's autocorrected, Panel Cop. <laughs> so I'm doing that. I think it's a bit too much. Very quickly on short notice here for, I mean, it's a debut for Dos Santos. Yeah. yeah. 30 27 for me. I think the first round is going to be somewhat close. Manel Cop will win it, and then he's going to really start to pull away and make it look like yeah. Manel Cop. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Manel Cop, we have to give him some respect. He's shown enough. I, I, was on the, I was on the Manel Cop boat yeah, well you before were, you, you were a fan before me for yeah. sure. So, Manuel Cape, for me, like, I can't possibly give it to Felipe Dos Santos. I don't care. There, I would have had to seen something goddamn extravagant on tape yeah. to, to pick him. Yeah, I so, I agree. I'm going Manel Cop. I think you get the TKO finish. Okay. Did you say decision? I said a, a big 30-27. Big, like, like a 30-26, a 30-27. Oh, shit, like, okay. like a, oh, oh is, not, that, is that something a new added to our glossary? Big A big, a big 30-27 is like a potential... 26, 26, 30? Man, that's a tough question. Because a, a, a 30, 26 is like you almost got finished. Yeah. A 30, 20, a big 30, 27 is like a, you just got your ass kicked for three yeah. rounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about it. Okay. Moving on. Co-main event, Tai Tuivasa. How does she? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, man, I love me some Tai Tuivasa. He's fighting Alexander Volkov. For me... It's one of those where like, I, who do who do who do you, who do I want to win? Who do I, I want Ty Tuivasa to win? Right. Volkov's not out here like, uh, but I'll, let me get the shoey like just she's right. not doing that. Ty Tuivasa, he's fat, he's funny, he's got a funny accent. Alexander Volkov seems kind of mean. No, he doesn't. He seems like a nice guy. He is a very nice. He's guy. six foot seven. Also, he's looked goddamn jacked lately, dude. He's he seems like he's taking his fitness seriously. Yeah. The teep kicks, the the bro, Tai Tuivasa is what, six one? Uh he's listed at let's see. Six two. Okay. Volkov six seven. Five inch reach advantage. T- listen, Ty it's got it's a Derek Lewis effect. Tai Tuivasa abs- absolutely could knock Volkov out, just like Derek Lewis did. Mm-hmm. I don't see it happening, man. Ugh, I almost want to pick Volkov by knockout, dude, but and Ty's like fighting pretty quickly after goddamn getting knocked out by Somewhat, yeah. Pavlovich in the first round. Lost to Gon right before that too. And uh, I'm not gonna pick. I'm not gonna pick. Is it okay? I'm not gonna pick the, the the method. Okay. I will say either knockout 
or a decision. Okay. Man, I'm gonna go knockout. Okay. I'm gonna go TKO for the goddamn Russian. And very underrated fighter. Alexander Volkov, hella experience. He's just so much technically better. He's bigger. He's probably faster. He's got a lot of power on his own. Mm-hmm. He's light on his feet. I got to go with Volkov. And as much as it hurts me, I want Ty to win, but I just... And he could. I just... I can't pick him. So I'm in sort of a similar boat here. Um, Ty Tuivasa comes in as a plus 170 dog. No shit. Which is... I would not put that in a parlay, but I'll, I'll sprinkle a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Come Saturday night, I bet you we're looking at evens. I bet you we're looking at a coin flip. The community is value now. Yeah, the community is going to bet Tai Tuivasa down to a pickup. Yeah, you're, you're going to see Tai right. Tuivasa as a plus. Again, the Derek Lewis effect. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He is four years younger than Drago, and a lot less wear and tear on his body when it comes to oh, no like question, the grand man. scheme of things. No right? question, man. But we have seen Tai Tuivasa take some pretty bad damage within the last one year. Granted, the Cyril Gon fight was... You're not always going to pull out, like, the crazy miraculous. miraculous. No, that, you know that, what I mean? that's like, seldom seen, right? It's rare. A year ago in September, on September 3rd, is when he lost to Cyril Gon. He took really bad damage in that fight. He got pieced up. Like, pieced up. Then, three months later, we said... Very quick return, exactly three months later against Sergey Pavlovich, and he got his face just pounded Man, in. That was bad, dude. In fifty seconds, I, that was like off-putting to see almost. Like, yeah, that you, was you the moment. You wouldn't expect Ty to like. I was worried for him. That was kind of the moment where I was like, I thought Pavlovich would win too. I mean, me too. I just didn't think it would be like, holy shit, dude! Like you're hurting him. That's like, that's the moment where yeah. I was like, yo, Pavlovich is the real deal, man. Um, look. I want Tai Tuivasa to win really badly here. I know the UFC does. There's a reason he's on this card. We There's a reason see, he's the co-main. We want, yeah, we want to see the shoey. We want to do all that shit. He doesn't deserve uh, to be co-main. Let's be real. I mean, I at this point, right? I, yeah, I, I it's feel the, you. It's the fact that it's themed and the fact that he's personality. Not a co-main on, on a pay-per-view. I get what on you're saying. On a pay-per-view. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It he, could be. It could, this could be a. Fight decent night fight event. night main event. Yeah. yeah, and he is a guy that belongs on a pay per view main card, so I totally get it. I get it too. Um, not as a co main, on like a big card. Right, exactly. He he should be opening the card kind of thing. But look, Tai Tuivasa can totally beat Volkov. Volkov is just better than him. Though. He's better. He is the better guy. He is the better fighter in a lot of ways. Eight out of ten times he should win that fight. That's what I'm saying. I. Everything in me wants to pick Tai to Ivasa, and I don't even have it written down. I don't have a pick written down. Yeah, me neither. That's how. Me neither. That's how like against doing this. Yeah, I was. I get it, man. So I get it. For I going to Ivasa I'm on the to, record. I'm going to Tai to Ivasa by knockout. I mean, first round. No, dude, you're just see, you're just putting shit in my mouth. I'm just asking. Pause. I'm just asking. Alexander Volkov by <laughs> late round TKO. Wait, what? Late round TKO. You just split to Volkov yeah. <laughs> by finish? Yeah. Okay, fair. That's wild. That's that's what I think. What just happened? I don't know. That's I'm, I'm tripping. Ha- you were building me up. You just blue balled the fuck out of me. You so, were just can, building me up. To- <laughs> can I break this down? I don't want to pick Volkov <laughs> at all. <laughs> you just picked up all. by finish too. Like that's because that here's what, I get it. You're saying if he's gonna win, he, it'll probably my, be my analytical fair. mind says he's going to beat. I just, I just that, that came out of left. Did you do that on purpose? I was tripping. Hey, right? my analytical mind is saying that he's going to beat Tai to Ivasa. He's going to be too long for him. To oh, not gonna, yo, pause, pause. Yo, he's not gonna be able to. Yo. Get, <laughs> yo. All right, you know what? This is off the rails. Yo. All right, I'm sorry. Anyways, he, he's going to be really long-bodied. And he's, he's going to play his range really well as he does. I think he's going to hurt Tai Tuivasa to the body a bunch, like Cyril Gan was kind of doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then eventually find a finish, man. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope Tai Tuivasa wins. I hope we get to see a shoey. I was going to ask you, what do they drink? But we already know Tai Tui Vasa we're, we're drinks beer. Already, yes. And Volkov probably drinks vodka, vodka and beer. Vodka, yeah. He said he wants to drink a beer with Tui Vasa yeah. afterwards. I had a question for you. But, but not out of shoe, please. That's what he said. Is that what he said? That's what he said. That's adorable. I would give him a little kiss on the forehead. Maybe that's a new thing we You'd should do. You'd have to fucking jump. Maybe that's the thing like, we should start doing. like Kissing people on the forehead? Diaz, kiss on the forehead certified. Like damn the, the guy, like, the kiss of the week. Yeah, man, little, like like little cute ass guys. Like, where's your girl at the Brazilian that you like? Did I you like them all, brother. I don't discriminate like that. 
Anyway, the main event of the evening, Israel Adesanya versus Deshaun Strickland. <laughs> this is, I mean, listen, I love Sean Strickland as much as the next guy. I just want to say he would not be this popular in any other sport. He would have been canceled. Oh, yeah. Flagged. Cut from the league. Anything. Yeah. Like, it would have been over, my guy. Like He has new merch that says, cancel me. I read a thing today that as soon as he arrived on the plane to Australia, mm-hmm. he got off the plane, and the first guy that he talked to, like, first native that he talked to, said that Adesanya is going to beat his ass, and he, and he uppercutted him. him in the stomach. Yeah. Do with that info what you will. But, man, listen. For me, it's not recency bias. We know the quality of fighter Adesanya is. Strickland is just not that. The only way that it would be, and you know what I'm going to say, is going to be if he starts grappling. We've never seen it, and we say that every goddamn time that Sean Strickland fights, and he never does it. And he said it himself. He's like, the retard takes over. And I'm sorry. I I actually personally really hate that word. I'm sorry that I said it. But he says the R word takes over, and... Yeah. I get it. It makes yeah. complete sense. It looks like it does. It says you see a guy standing across the cage from you and you want to do the man dance. I just think, like, I just think is he there's less emotions involved. He's the champ. You told me today he's looking an extra juice. Dude. Yeah. The striking skill of this fight's going to take place on the feet. Let's be real. Like eight, 70% chance. If Strickland tries to take him down, is he has some of the best takedown defense as it is yeah. in this weight class. 205 different whatever. I don't see it happening. We've never seen it from Sean Strickland. Izzy's going to win. I think he gets the finish round three. Yeah. So By TKO. There we go. Um, I don't have much to add, man. You said everything. I will link embedded for you guys in the description below just because I want you guys to see at the end of this episode, they were showing Izzy like hitting mitts or something. They kind of ended the episode with him. He looks humongous. Yeah. I am certain that one of two things is happening after this fight. If he wins, which I do expect him to win, round two TKO, which is okay. what, which is the first thing that popped in my mind the moment this fight was announced. Yeah, I don't think Sean Strickland's awkwardness moving forward is going to be anything. No, it's most nothing. guys. That's like the thing with Strickland, right? You're yeah. like the awkward style moving forward constantly. Is he I, it's seen not going to be a thing. Is for he seen yeah. it? All? Two things. I think he's either a moving up to two hundred five in hopes Strickland? of Strickland. No, Israel Adesanya. Oh man, in hopes of. Alex Pereira beating Yiri and setting that up for double champ status. I think that he would only do that if they offered him hella money. So why, just, why, why put yourself in that position? For double know? champ status, right? So I think that, you know, I, here's what I think. I think he's going for double champ status again if he wins this fight. I think he's happy that, or, that he's gone. Or, and he mentioned this on Freestyle Bender, which I will also link in the description for you guys. He mentioned, after I beat Sean Strickland, if Hamza Chamayev wins his fight and looks good against Paulo Costa, which is a very difficult thing to do. He said I, that? Yeah, he said, I made it look easy. Paulo Costa's not an easy fight. But if Hamza beats him and makes it look good, give me Chamayev. He's either wow. trying to piss off hey, Drickus that, that Duplessis. Is, that is getting me fucking hard right now, bro. He's either trying to piss off Drickus Duplessis, or he might be back on the is he one titty juice, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. in, in preparations for a 205 trip or... A Hamza Chamaya fight. I still want to see. I still hope that he one day or soon, with the next three fights, fights Duplessis. I want to see him fuck him up. Yeah, I would love to see it. Yeah. I, dude, I, I feel like at this fucking point, I'd pick Drickus Duplessis. Don't, don't. I don't want to hear that. That's We're not anyways. talking about that. Fuck Drickus. He's a y'all's boy. Yeah, I'm never God. an our boy. I'm God. I have a picture with him because I was forced to take it by Davey. Shout out, Davey. I don't believe that. I don't know. You're a grown man. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, but yeah, anyways, anyways. Um, yeah. So Israel Adesanya and still, um, I, I don't think. What are the odds on this? It's like minus six fifty for Izzy. Oh, I want to ask Christ. you really quickly before we sign off here. What do I even do with my? Like, can you think of? Can you think of at least in the last three, four, five years? Can you think of a person that was less deserving than Sean Strickland getting a title shot? And I don't mean to knock Sean Strickland at yeah. all. He's on a two fight win streak. He has beat some really good guys, but I just think that, like, recently we're getting a ton of that, right? We're getting him. We got the O'Malley fight, which obviously O'Malley ended up winning it. I don't think he necessarily deserved a title shot, but we're here now. We're getting a Colby Covington rematch, or Colby Covington fight. I love Colby Covington. I don't think he deserves it. I don't think Stipe deserves his title fight that's yeah. coming up. So I was, we're I'm trying to think. You put, like, like you put, I put you on the spot earlier. Yeah. I'm, I was trying to think of somebody I couldn't on the spot. Yeah. Off the top of my head, yeah, you're right. 
Like, I mean, yeah, it's like. And I, I just want to say, I felt that more before, but then okay. he like, he makes it work. So, but you're right. I agree. Yeah. He'll never be goddamn champion. No, dude. Well, how can he be? He he belongs seven seven to ten in the weight class. He's gonna float around. And he could beat any of those guys, and he right. could lose to any of those yeah. guys. Yeah. So, anyway, that's UFC 293. Thank you guys for tuning in. Dino Bam Bam, take us out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, we would really appreciate it if you hit the little subscribe button, ring the little bell, thumbs up, comment, all that jazz. Uh, also, follow us on Instagram at V107MMA. Guys, UFC 293 is going to be lit. It's 293, right? Yes. Should be somewhat lit. Uh, he's DS. I'm Dino Bam Bam. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Thank you.